I'm Lucy Munro and I'm a reader in Shakespeare and Early Modern Literature at King's College London. I'm Gordon McMullen, Professor of Shakespeare Studies and Director of the London Shakespeare Centre here at King's College London. Shakespeare's status within society is very interesting. He starts off from a relatively comfortable kind of background. His father, who was a glover, was involved in civic administration in Stratford-on-Avon and so would have been able to send his son to the, to the grammar school in Stratford. His mother's family were probably higher status than his father's family and so he has links with, with people who, who would have called themselves gentlemen rather than yeomen, which is a very key kind of distinction in this period. Shakespeare was clearly keen to become and to be known as a gentleman. And he did, in the end, manage to become William Shakespeare a gentleman. But he seems quite concerned with his social status. So at one point later on, he actually applies for a coat of arms for his family um, and seems to have quite carefully designed what the arms would be and what the motto would be. And it's a, quite a plain shield with a diagonal across it, with a spear on it, logically enough, Shakespeare. Um, and the motto, known sans droit, not without right, it's a bit uncomfortable, isn't it? I have the right to be a gentleman, but I'm going to say it in a double negative because I feel a bit awkward about it. By me, William Shakespeare exhibition here in the Inigo Room in King's College London um, is a co-curated exhibition that we have been lucky enough to create with the National Archives. So this exhibition is um, King's and the National Archives contribution to the consortium called Shakespeare 400 which we've been setting up over the last three or four years. The idea of this exhibition is to demonstrate Shakespeare uh, living in London, uh, living in particular contexts, working with his fellow actors, the other people involved in, first of all, the Lord Chamberlain's men, and then after James I's accession, that same company becomes the King's men. Um, across that time, King, the King's men acquire increased status, Shakespeare requires increased status, Shakespeare requires more money. Um, they were a very, very, very successful acting company and what we show in the exhibition is Shakespeare's life in London and working with and for that acting company. The map of London was very, very different in Shakespeare's day so that for Shakespeare, East London would basically have been the Tower. <laughs> so there wasn't very much at all of what we call East London. The area that is of most relevance, I suppose, would be uh, Shoreditch, where the two theatres that Shakespeare's company first performed in, the Curtain Theatre and the Playhouse, known not very helpfully as the Theatre, were both located. It's possible that Shakespeare had links with Croydon. Um, there was an archbishop who had a palace down in Croydon where we know that at least one play was performed um, or was written for that venue. Um, so Thomas Nash's Summer's Last Will and Testament is a kind of private household play um, seemingly written for performance in Croydon. By 1600, there are several large competing theatres playing a different play every afternoon. And you can see from the kinds of play that Shakespeare wrote that he wrote with a wide-ranging audience in mind. Um, and it was clearly a fashionable thing to do, to go to the Blackfriars Theatre, particularly if you were showing off, you had your feathery head, uh, hat on and you had your sword and so forth, and sometimes rows started up between the, the, uh, uh, you know, the lads about town who would actually sit on the edge of the stage on stools and their swords would sort of poke back into the people on the front row, get a bit irritated. Um, so it was quite lively. The will shows him leaving the quest to a range of his Stratford friends and a range of his London friends, particularly to his three best friends amongst his acting company, the King's Men, John Hemmings, Richard Burbage, Henry Condell. Um, and then he leaves a series of quite careful bequests to his family. He's ensuring the continuity of the line as much as he can. The additional sentence that's been written in um, into the gap between two of the original lines where it says, item I give unto my wife my second best bed with the furniture, the furniture being the linen and the bedding and so forth. And probably this is not the um, insult or slight that it's been understood to be. Giving his wife the second best bed doesn't mean that he didn't like her. Shakespeare seems to be an amazing 
vehicle for cultures to think about themselves, imagine themselves, reimagine themselves. Uh, the thing about Shakespeare now in 2016, above all, is that he has long ceased to be a purely English or British playwright, and he has happily long ceased to be a playwright or poet of empire, and he has become a global writer above all.